The key to success with fasting metabolically is not necessarily just derived from weight loss. There's some interesting studies now that are demonstrating that even if subjects don't lose weight and are still obese or very overweight, the metabolic improvements that they have are second to none, showing that maybe fasting is doing something internally that is beyond just weight loss. Now there's some research that really explains why, and we're gonna go over that, and we're also gonna explain what you can do to accelerate and get more out of it. After today's video, I encourage you to try colostrum. You've probably heard people talking about it before. There's a company called Armra. Now, colostrum is not a supplement. It's more of a whole food, okay? So in this particular case, Armra is 100% bovine colostrum that comes after the calves have been fed. So it's perfectly sustainable, but also comes from grass-fed cows, but also from a co-op of dairy farmers. So it's ensuring really high quality product. Now, what's interesting about this colostrum from Armra is that it is not heat pasteurized like most colostrum, making it the most bioavailable colostrum that you can find. What that means is that like when you heat pasteurize it, it breaks everything down, the 400 different living nutrients that are in colostrum. So with their cold chain technology, it makes it so that it's ensuring the delivery of this stuff. The way that I've been using colostrum is to help with recovery. There's some literature that suggests that it's up to a 50% increase in recovery. Obviously very good for the gut. It can help rebuild that gut barrier, but overall just gives you a good sense of feeling energized and feeling recovered. So that link down below is going to get you 15% off. It's tryarmra.com slash Thomas. Again, that's tryarmra.com slash Thomas. So check them out. So this study was published in the journal Cell Research in 2021, okay? And what it ultimately uncovered is that when subjects were obese, they still had tremendous benefits from intermittent fasting, even if they didn't lose weight. Now, in order for all of this to make sense, I have to explain what something called brown fat is. And what we ultimately have found is that yes, through indirect ways, certain types of fasting influence the production of brown fat. Brown fat is metabolically active fat. So we have regular unsightly white fat, but then if we do the right things, like in this case, potentially fasting, that white fat can start to beige and become brown. What this means is it develops more of a blood flow and it develops what are called uncoupling proteins, which dissipate calories that we consume from our food as heat, free calorie loss, right? Eat food, the calories get dissipated as heat, like a radiator heater, and just emits out. So also we get other metabolic benefits, may improve insulin resistance, all kinds of things. So brown fat equals good. So with this study, they took a look at rodents and they put them on an isocaloric intermittent fasting diet. Now these particular mice were obese. They induced obesity through their diet. And what they found is that when the mice were on an intermittent fasting regimen, they had significant metabolic improvements despite being obese. Why is this such a big deal? Well, obviously obesity is not a good thing, right? And obesity triggers a cascade of terrible metabolic outcomes. But in this particular case, even when obese, intermittent fasting changed the metabolism so they had huge metabolic improvements. That's crazy cool, but why? Well, they found that this happened via the browning of white fat. You see, there's two different kinds of ways we can look at how brown fat works. There's brown fat activation, which is where we are turning on the existing brown fat that we have, which is definitely great. Fasting does that, ketogenic diet does that, cold exposure does that, going out in the cold does that, because you're encouraging the brown fat to create heat, to keep you warm, yada, yada. But then there's a different kind. There's the beijing of white fat, turning white fat into brown fat. So one is activating brown fat and the other is actually creating new brown fat. We are finding with this research, at least in rodent models, that fasting creates new brown fat, creating a new and improved metabolic ecosystem for our body. Now this leads us to believe that brown adipose tissue might be one of the major keys to our success with fasting. Why, sure we lose weight, but that might just be a positive casualty the real cool stuff is coming from the fact that we're developing more brown fat and becoming more metabolically active with a higher resting energy expenditure, higher metabolic rate as is. In this study, they also found that there was an increase in what is called vasoendothelial growth factor. Okay, so VEGF. 
Now, this means that we are forming new blood vessels, getting new blood flow into the adipose tissue. And that explains why we are starting to develop brown fat. If there's blood flow, there will be mitochondria. Mitochondria can actually process energy. The more mitochondria we have, whether it's in muscle or fat, the more we can incinerate calories and the more, essentially, metabolism we have. So how do you get more out of this brown fat thing with fasting now that we've learned this? Well, the simple thing is you can do things like cold exposure, and I've talked about this before, just exposing yourself to temperatures between 57 and 60 degrees for an hour or two a day. So going out for a walk when it's brisk out, dipping in a cool pool, something like that. You can also jump in a cold plunge and then get out and let your body work up to body temperature again. That's gonna generate more brown fat. Green tea is also very good for brown fat. Okay. Also, curcumin, turmeric curcumin, very good for brown fat production. So these kinds of things in tandem with fasting might work really well. We've also seen that a lower carb ketogenic diet can influence brown adipose tissue. So if you're fasting, it may not hurt to combine your fasting with a lower carb diet so that you can generate more ketones and get there. I have other videos on that topic, like how to properly do a ketogenic diet, how to combine keto with fasting, things like that. The other thing that you can do is you can take exogenous ketones that might help support the browning of fat as well. But at the end of the day, the longer the fast up to a certain point, the more brown fat activation you're going to get. So what I would recommend is maybe doing like two or three 20 to 22 hour fasts per week. Try doing maybe one meal a day or two meal a day, two times per week, along with some of the things that I've talked about, consuming the green tea during the day, and maybe even the afternoon switch into a decaf green tea so you can still sleep at night. I hope that this all brings it together for you, and I'll see you tomorrow.